we see this in the purification process of a leper. The Torah calls it Zarat. The leper is excommunicated and before he can be considered cured of the affliction that he contracted, he has to go through a sort of a ritual purification process. The Torah, like I said, calls it Zarat. It is some sort of whitish discoloration of the skin, a discoloration of the hair. But the Torah isn't interested in treating this medically. It's interested in treating it spiritually. It's seen as some sort of spiritual malady that manifests itself in the physical form. The purification process for the leper to the modern ear seems so bizarre. There's two birds. You kill one bird, you dip the other bird into the blood of the other bird. Um, there's a piece of cedar wood, a scarlet thread, hyssop plant. How are we supposed to relate to these strange, strange laws of the leper? and the purification process of the leper. For now, <laughs> let's take a look at a few of the elements of what happened towards the end of that purification process of the leper. Like I said, the leper is excommunicated. And before he can be considered cured, of the affliction that he contracted, he has to go through a sort of a ritual purification process. Leviticus 14. The person being cleansed shall then immerse his garments, shave off all his hair, and immerse himself in water and become clean after this. He may enter the camp, but he shall remain outside his tent for seven days. So we see that he has to be washed with water. He has to put on fresh clothing. And then he remains outside for seven days. Look at verses 18. And what is left over from the oil that is in the Kohen's palm, he shall place upon the head of the person being cleansed. And the Kohen shall effect atonement for him before Yahweh. So we see the concept of anointing oil poured on the head of this leper, which is our fourth um, 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 clue. Verses 20. And the Kohen shall bring up the burnt offering and the meal offering to the altar. The Kohen shall thus effect atonement for him. We have the fifth element, the theme of atonement. And he shall be completely clean. Let's go back to verses 14. And the Kohen shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering, and the Kohen shall place it above the cartilage of the right ear of the person being cleansed, and the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. We see our sixth element. The right ear, the thumb, the big toe. Blood is applied. So when you look at the six elements or the six themes or the six rituals that is performed or that was performed during the inauguration ceremony of the priest, you see that the same thing is done for the leper. The leper had to wash himself in water just as the Kohen were required to. The leper obviously didn't put on any special priestly garments, but he did have to launder his clothing he actually had to put on fresh clothing before he re-entered the tent, just like the Kohanim. The Kohen took the oil that remained on his palm and he put it on the head of the leper. That's precisely what Moshe did to Aaron. Throughout the purification process of the leper, the verse tells us that the purpose of it all is for atonement. That's exactly what was done to Aaron and his sons in the induction ceremony. 
right ear, the thumb, the big toe. Now he sits outside his tent for seven days, just as the Kohanim had to sit outside the Ohel Moed, the tent of meeting, the Mishkan, for seven days. Now, if there were only a few of these parallels, we might have been able to chalk it up to coincidence. But the combination of all of them makes it seem like there's really some sort of essential connection. So the question is, of course, what is it that connects these two? The leper and then the priest and then the leader. What do the parallels mean? 